Imagine if every email or form submission your company received could instantly sort itself, notify the right team, or automatically get updated or added to your tracking system. In less than 10 minutes, I'll show you how to set up a simple version of this workflow. Check it out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business process and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, you can visit our website, innerdevsolutions.com, or you can click the link in the description below to book a free consult. You will need a couple of tools. If you don't have accounts already in these tools, there's links in the description below to get started. First one is Smart Suite. Second one is Relay.app. Smart Suite is going to be the database tool that we used that will track and log the actual email or form submission that you receive. And then relay.app is where the magic is going to happen. That's where your email will be analyzed and it will decide the route that it needs to go. So whether you want to send the email to accounting, whether you want to send it or assign it to another department like HR sales, something along those lines, as mentioned, links in the description below for both of those. We're going to get started here in relay. And best practice, as always, label your tools, whether it's a workflow, whether it's a solution table, give them labels so they know what the workflow is actually doing. So let's call this email triage system. And the first thing we want to do is add a trigger. In this case, our trigger is going to be when a label is added depending on your company and how you set things up. If you have a general email address, that's something like info at your company name, you could set up a filter so that it automatically gets this label added to it. Or if you have someone that monitors it, uh, you could have them take a look and then add that label if it needs to be triaged in some way, shape or form. So within Gmail, I have a label. I just call it testing. And then I have two emails here that we are going to do the testing on. What we're going to do is search for Gmail. You could use Outlook as well, but I'm going to go down to this label added. So that's our trigger. When a label is added, now we have to select the label, which is just going to be testing. And then you have the option for this optional filters. I'm not going to worry about that. And you can see it's picking up the two emails that I just showed you in Gmail. We can use those later in a test. So we'll go add a step. Our first step, we'll add an AI step and we will select the custom prompt. It's by default selected GPT 4.0 mini, and that's going to be fine for this use case. And this is what we're going to use and pass the email information to it. And then from there, the AI can decide what path it goes down. And I'll show you how to set up that prompt. I've already created it, so I'll paste it in here and give a brief explanation of what this prompt is doing. The prompt essentially says your job is to analyze the following email and perform the following steps or actions. The two steps essentially is going to be a categorization and a summary, and I'll show you how we're going to use those in a moment. So I'm just going to jump over to smart suite real quick. I already have a table set up here. And there's just a few things simply that we need. We have type. And again, depending on your company, these are going to vary, but we're going to imagine that we have a team, probably customer service that looks after problems and warranty, a quote inquiry. This could be something like your sales department, HR request, anything HR re related, or someone's sending in a job application, a resume, something along those lines. We have accounting, and then we have a fallback of unknown. This is something that maybe the AI couldn't pick up what the email was in reference to, it will just default to unknown and someone will have to come in and update it accordingly and assign it to whoever it needs to go to. We have status, that's going to be pending, done, in progress, those types of things. And then we have a summary of the email, the actual email, the assigned to, so who you're assigning this task to, who it was submitted by and the person's email address. You could also add a attachment or files field as well, where you could upload attachments get, get sent to you. That is a simple overview of the system within SmartSuite. I'll jump back into Relay now and I'll explain what this does. As I said, 
analyzes the email. Then we have a categorization. And from there, we're just saying that based off of the email that you reviewed, what category does it relate to the problem warranty, quote inquiry, HR request or accounting or unknown. And I gave a little extra information for each of those. And then the next step, which is just within the same prompt is a summary, provide a concise summary of the email at 150 characters or less. And then here I'm going to pass in the email subject and body. These are going to be variables based off of the email. That's the subject. And this is the body. And now the AI model has received all the information that it needs. I'm going to scroll down to here and put end the run successfully. Actually a better case is probably continue without an AI output and we'll create or could create a step that notifies someone that there was an error and someone can come in and handle it manually at that case. So that's what I'll do is select the continue without an AI output. And I'm just going to click this generate from prompt. What we need is the summary and the category. It might give us some additional information here as well, which we don't need. And it did, there's a few things that we don't need here is we don't need the email body. We don't need the subject. We do want the summary so we can click into this and it's provided instructions, a concise summary of the email. Sure. That's fine. And the category and it's brought in all of our categories properly. So that's good too. So we can hit save there. Next step, we're going to create a new record in smart suite. So now we have to go find that table. I have it just listed in the email form submissions solution with the tickets table name. From here, we have the different fields that are available. Type is one that we're going to want to pass in, and we can bring that in from the AI output, which is the email category, and we can bring in a summary. That one is also going to be from the AI output, and that's going to be the email summary here that it's generated. The message, that's just going to be from the email, and that can be the actual body of the email. And if we wanted, we could pass in the subject as well pass in subject there and the body down below and the email. This is the email address that it was sent from. It will go from an email and submitted by that will be from the emails, go up to the from option here and we'll use the name option. We can hit done and go on to the next step. We will use a flow control and we'll select pass. Now that the AI has reviewed the email, and assigned some form of category to it, we can create a path for each category. Imagining, let's say we had those different departments within the company. We could, if it was categorized as HR, we could make sure that we send it to the HR department, whether that's to an email address that goes to all of HR, or maybe we have a Slack channel, something along those lines. What I'm actually gonna do in this video is use a Slack channel and I'm not going to create a path for each individual category that we have. It's just going to become redundant, but I will show you just two different paths based on the categories because it's all the same in the end. So the first one being, I'll just label this problem slash warranty, and then we'll add a path rule here based off of the AI output and the category. So if it's one of problem warranty, and I'll just throw in the quote inquiry into this one as well. So that way, if it's either of those, it will go down this path. Like I said, realistically, you're going to have a path for each of these. So now if we go in, find the Slack option, we'll send a message and we can send it to a channel. In this case, I'll just send it to my general channel. And what we can do here is we could write in that it is a problem or warranty as our header. I'm just going to pass in the email category, which is from the AI step. I'll pass in the email body so that there's some context to what this is about. And then I will put a view in smart suite link and we can pass in the link from the record URL and I'll make this bold in this step. If the AI model identifies the email as a problem warranty type of issue or claim, then we could send the email to customer service or 
to the customer service channel. Again, I'm just using general because that's what I have within my system, but I think you get the point here. So same thing. If we have a second step, we call this quote inquiry and we'll set up rules for this as well. So we'll come into here, AI output, email category is one of quote inquiry, or we'll just use the accounting option as well in this case. And I realized back in here, I added quote inquiry there as well when I actually wanted HR request. But again, it doesn't really matter. Each of these options should be their own step because they'll go to a unique email address or Slack chain. I'm just going to duplicate this and then I'm going to click on it, drag over to quote inquiry and drop it in here. It's going to again, send it to the general channel, but imagine we have a sales team or something along those lines. Maybe it goes to a leads channel. You could send that in accordingly. So now that we have our two paths, like I said, not going to bother creating the other paths because they're all the same. I am going to create one last step. This can be a Gmail step and I'm going to use this reply option. I'm going to reply to the original email. You can select who it's coming from. We will send the reply to sender and all recipients. And in the body, we say we received your email and we'll be in touch soon. Now that we have the workflow set up, we can go ahead and test it. I start a test run. I will select this warranty claim option and we'll create the test run. It's calling the GPT-4 O-Mini model. It'll create the record for us. It will send a message in our Slack channel. And now if I go over Smart Suite, we can see that it's been added here. Here's the email that came through notified us in our general Slack channel. And if I click this, it will open up to this page and it'll actually open up to this expanded record. We can take some sort of action on it. it has the logged in user right now. If I want to pick up this ticket or issue, I can just click this yes option. If I go back into our relay step, I'll start another test run. And this time I'm going to select payment for invoice. So this is me inquiring about an invoice that I have to pay, create a test run. And you can see it's gone through each step. I'll get a notification in Slack again. And you can see here it's created a new ticket and it's identified the type of the email accordingly. So in this case, it's a warranty type of claim. And in this case, it needs to be directed to accounting. So again, it would get notified in the accounting Slack channel. Then whoever sees it or wants to take action on it can open it up, come in here and pick up the tick. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more tutorials in the future.